This is a National Geographic virtual field trip. Today, we launch into space, exploring the millions of wonders is it there? we share with our solar system. Let's take a look. Welcome to National Geographic headquarters in Washington, DC. My name is Krista Strahan, and I am your tour guide on this virtual field trip. Today, we're exploring a dynamic new graphic of our solar system that can help us more easily understand the cosmos. Quick question, did you know that the Earth could have a twin? Well, hold tight, because we're talking with an explorer who's dedicated to answering that very question. We're also going to meet a young explorer who's teaching students, just like you, to build satellites and rockets. So for this virtual field trip, the sky truly is the limit. To begin, we're heading to the design studio, where one of our researchers and one of our graphics editors are taking us into the Nat Geo process and out of this world. The solar system is believed to have formed 4.6 billion years ago with the formation of the sun. There was a swirling cloud of dust around it, and out of that dust, planetesimals and planets started to form. Today, what we see is things are still changing. Different objects are passing through our solar system, and so it is still a dynamic system. We have our rocky planets and Earth, our home. The graphic we created has the most current science and understanding of our solar system. The Kuiper belt is huge. Orderly and chaotic at the same time. Jupiter is the guardian of the main belt. We can see those glowing in the night sky. It's a great thrill, but also a great responsibility. Hi, my name is Manuel Canales. I'm a senior graphic editor for National Geographic magazine. Hi, my name is Patty Healy, and I am a graphic researcher for National Geographic. Manuel and I have been working together for about five years. I find the important information to display in graphics. And I combine the illustration and data to tell the story. What I like about my job is I have the opportunity to talk about different subjects. For example, I did a, a graphic about animals, bugs, marsh rovers, snow leopard, dinosaurs, toilets, and now the space. It's a graphic about where we are, what we are going to explore. When they assigned me this project, I was thrilled because I love space, I am a huge fan. Hi, buddy. What fascinates me most about the solar system is how dynamic it is. Things are still changing. They have discovered new, new asteroids. And I just think that is amazing that all these things outside of just our little Earth sphere are happening. So you're thinking more of a graphic than a map. This is a graphic because... To create the solar system graphic, we first had to decide on the extent. Like, how far out are we showing? The, the cross section, you know? Yeah, I love this idea. Are we going to show just the inner planets to the outer planets or the reaches beyond? I think that would be a great extent if we showed from the sun out through the Kuiper belt. There was so much information, so many stories we could tell, and finding what is the right story and what's the most current and accurate story. And then as we gathered information and formed things up, I'll give him that information and he brings it to life on the page. When the research comes back to me, I start to analyze that and make a first draft is a sketch. The main structures that make up the solar system, of course, starting with our sun. And then we move to the inner planets and the outer planets, which are the gas giants. Jupiter is the boss of the solar system. 
Jupiter and Saturn grew much larger because they are made mostly of gas and that takes up more space than a rocky material. And then we have the main asteroid belt that falls between Mars and Jupiter. The main belt looks like a donut. An asteroid is a leftover bit that came together through gravity in the beginning of the solar system. And you can see the different bits circle within the asteroid belt. And then just beyond Neptune, our last planet, we have the Kuiper Belt, which is a vast icy region of small objects. Another big donut that is the Kuiper Belt. What can we say about these things now that we're showing them visually and we have the extent that we want to show? Pointing out interesting facts about each one of these objects on the graphic. With Patty, we always have great information and that is the base of a great graphic. And from there, we would take it and send it out to experts and get their feedback and they say this orbit is wrong or this, this data is wrong or something, we go back, we change it and send them back to the final approval. It's important that we get all the details right and all the facts checked because people rely on National Geographic and have as a standard of excellence. It's important to learn about the solar system because that is our neighborhood. There's been a lot of study about objects that are close to us because they were more accessible to Earth. As technology increases, our range increases and our understanding of the solar system increases. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. The question that I have about the solar system after this project is the Kuiper Belt, because it's a huge, vast universe there, and there are many things they haven't discovered yet. So maybe in the future, we will do another graphic about the Kuiper Belt with new discoveries, the new object, huge objects, of course. <laughs> That was amazing. It's hard to believe that there are millions of objects orbiting in our solar system, and we're just starting to understand them. Well, we're so excited to have Patty and Manuel here with us today. Welcome to you both. Hi, Krista. Hi, Krista. Now, you have created such a fascinating graphic, kind of a new vision of our solar system. Patty, first, can you explain why we call this a graphic instead of a map? It's a graphic because it's not real. You wouldn't really find objects in the universe in these positions and in with these spatial relationships. Maps kind of highlight spatial relationships. So it's more of a visual storytelling of the areas in our solar system. Fantastic. So Manuel, what's your favorite feature in this image? Well, my favorite feature is uh, the cross-section of the main belt because it was very hard to do it. And also it's a brand new uh, idea to make this, uh, this cross-section in like a, in a stairway, just to see the gap between the families. It took us like a month to make wow. that because we, we, we went back and forth with the expert, um, with Antoine, that is the 3D artist, to give me the, 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 the points, etc. We did a lot of things, a scatter plot, to make it more, more realistic. And at the end, we went to this idea to make it more uh, perspective. And when we solved that part, helped us also to make the cross-section of the caper belt and to align everything in a backbone when we put the gas giant. Well, it sounds like you like a challenge and we're so excited because it turned out beautiful. So thank you so much for your work. So as we saw in the video, your teamwork is pretty special. How many people total helped make this graphic and how important is it to work as a team on a complex project like this? It's very important to work as a team because we cannot do this kind of project alone. 
there are many things to to take care of the experts, the, the information, the quality of the production. Um, well, I, I cannot number the quantity, but I can tell you that Patty and I will start the project. And while the process move on, we add more people. So in this part, when we have the first draft, we present to my directors, they gave us feedback. And then when we have in the other is a step at an artist, a 3D artist, and we added more people and more people. Something that I love to work in National Geographic is that you have the opportunity to work with a very talented people. This is the best to work in, in team. That is the kind of result that product that we can do. And Patty, your thoughts on working in a team? I feel like we couldn't do with, without everyone having their specialty and so creative ideas. Um, I present the information to Manuel. He figures out a way to make it clear and display it beautifully. I'll suggest some notes um, for the writer who will make it come to life through text. And we have the visuals from Manuel and from artists. So everybody has their piece. And we couldn't do it without the editors and all the production people behind it. So teamwork, it's the most important thing. Well, I love that collaboration. Patty and Manuel, we can't thank you enough for visiting with us today and allowing us to come behind the scenes at National Geographic with you. Thank you, Krista. Thank you. Take care. And now I have a few questions for all of you out there. Okay, think back to the video we saw earlier. What is the best description of the asteroid and Kuiper belts? Do they look like A, a Frisbee, B, a donut, C, a dinner plate, or D, a football? The correct answer is B, a donut. Here's another question. What aspects of the solar system did Manuel and Patty consider when making their graphic? A, Kuiper belt objects. B, the size of planets. C, inner planets. Or D, all of the above. That's right, all of the above. Great job, everyone. I have one more question for the whole group to answer. What part of our solar system would you most like to visit? Is it A, Mars, B, the moon, C, Jupiter, or D? No thanks, I'll stay right here on Earth. All right, as we learn from Patty and Manuel, we're making discoveries in space every single day. Our next explorer is searching beyond our solar system for planets that might resemble Earth. And she uses a pretty amazing telescope to do it. If we try to find the Helix Nebula, is it there? Oh yes, it's kind of toward the center. What we're looking at now is nearly 30 million times as far away as Mars. Astrophysicist Munaza Alam is in Cambridge, Massachusetts, searching the stars for distant planets. Our solar system consists of a star known as the Sun and eight planets. These planets are held in orbit around the sun by its gravitational pull. Planets found outside of our solar system are known as exoplanets. And these are what Munaza is searching for. To find them, Munaza needs a telescope, and a powerful one at that. 
here at Harvard University, she's got one, the Clay Telescope. This is an advanced telescope, and we use a computer to control where it points. It has attached to it something that's very similar to a camera. So when we point the telescope to whatever we're interested in observing, the telescope will start to collect the light into this device. And we can use that light that we collect to take a picture of what the telescope is looking at. Just as gravity causes our Earth to revolve around the sun, gravity's pull also causes other planets to revolve around their host stars. So by watching stars, we can discover other planets. To find these exoplanets, Munaza uses an advanced technique called the transit method. It involves looking for periodic changes in the star's brightness due to an orbiting exoplanet passing in front of, or as astronomers call it, transiting its star. So if we have our star and we have a planet passing in front of it, when the planet is on this side of the star, we just observe the light from the star. But when the planet is in front of the star, then it blocks a portion of the light. And that causes this dip in the brightness of the star. And then when it passes, it again restores the brightness of the star. This dip tells us the size of the planet. By measuring a star's temporary dimming, Munaza can estimate everything from the size of the exoplanet to its temperature. We have discovered exoplanets that are similar to our own solar system's Jupiter, but very close in, so they're hot. We've discovered icy worlds, rocky worlds, and we've even discovered that exoplanets have atmospheres like our own Earth. But for Munaza, finding exoplanets isn't enough. She's looking for an Earth twin. I want to find a world that has an ocean, ice caps, or even life. In order to identify such a planet, we would need to search for biosignatures or the fingerprints of life. We think these could be oxygen, ozone, or methane, depending on what we see in our Earth's atmosphere. But who knows what the biosignatures could be on other planets, depending on what the life forms are like. Monaza hasn't found an Earth twin yet, but she's optimistic. There are thousands of planets out there waiting to be discovered, but they're hidden among the vastness of the universe. So she's looking for more help. The world needs more astronomers so that we can work together collectively to understand our place on Earth and the universe. My job is amazing. As an astronomer, I get to visit telescopes at interesting locations like deserts and mountaintops, and I get to explore the universe. If you're interested in becoming an astronomer, I'd suggest being curious, ask questions, ask why, and look up at the night sky. We are so thrilled to have Manaza here with us today. Welcome, Manaza. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Manaza, the telescopes and equipment you use in your job are incredible, and they're huge. But to interpret the data that you gather, you also have to use specific skills. What are those skills? So the huge telescopes that I use collect a lot of light. And that light is saved in large data files. So I need to use my computer to open and process and analyze these files. So the first skill that's important in analyzing this data is writing computer programs in order to be able to manipulate and open these files. And then to analyze the data contained in them, I also need to use my skills in statistics, in graphing or visualizing the data, and also in pattern recognition in order to fully understand what the data that I've gathered is telling me. And lastly, but most importantly, another skill that I need to use is science communication. I need to be able to share and explain what conclusions that I've drawn from the data to other astronomers to the general public, and even to students like you. Well, I love that there's such a diverse amount of skills and knowledge that you need to do what you do. So many of our students ask the same question, and I'm sure you get asked this by everyone you meet. Are we gonna find life on other planets, Manaza? And if so, when? This is a great question because 
it really gets at the root of why we as humans are so interested in the night sky and specifically exoplanets or planets beyond the solar system. For centuries, humans have wondered, are we alone or are there others out there? And the most direct way to answer this question is to characterize the conditions of distant planets. The first step is to understand the weather and the climate of these other worlds. So as astronomers, we've started measuring the atmospheres of, of exoplanets to better understand what they're like. But the data that we have in hand at the moment is not precise enough to make a, a sure claim of life. But there are upcoming telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope, which is actually scheduled to launch later this year, that will bring us one step closer to this goal. And I'm hoping that the discoveries that this telescope makes in the next few decades will allow us to detect some biosignatures or fingerprints of life on exoplanets. And that's the next step in addressing this centuries old question. But as to whether we'll come into contact with these possible life forms, that's still up in the air. So my final answer is maybe. I love it, I love it. And I'm gonna hold tight to that maybe. In the video, you encourage students to be curious and look up at the night sky if they want to be astronomers. What else should they do if they want to follow in your footsteps and reach for the stars? In addition to being curious, I would say don't be afraid to ask questions because no question is dumb or silly. And most importantly, never give up and always bounce back. Your journey, whatever it may be, is not always going to be easy. So it's really important to remain strong and grounded while you have your sights on the stars and your family and friends will be the key to this. Having people around you that support you is really important for making your journey easier and all the more meaningful. Well, that advice is great for whatever our students wanna do. Thank you for joining us today, Manaza. We have learned so much. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Now I have some more questions for everyone. What does Monaza want to find with her observations of distant stars? Is it A, other stars like our sun, B, massive planets like Jupiter, C, black holes orbiting a star, or D, Earth-like planets? That's right, she's looking for an Earth twin, but she could also find all these other things as well. Here is your next question. Manaza said you should do the following if you want to be an astronomer. Was it A, be curious? B, ask questions? C, look up at the night sky? Or D, all of the above? As you can imagine, all of these things are pretty important if you want to be an astronomer. And now a final question for all of you. What do you think will be the next big discovery in space? Will it be A, a new planet, B, new life forms, or C, new ways for humans to live in space? So exciting to think of the discoveries that may be just around the corner. Now we're going to meet a National Geographic young explorer and educator who is teaching his students how to create their own missions into space. My name is Elias Psirukis and I am a National Geographic young explorer. I became interested in space as a high school student uh, when I was about 16 years old. As high school students, we created our own small educational satellite 
This experience transformed our lives and so we decided to pass this experience to the next generation. We created SPIN, SPIN Space Innovation, a non-profit organization that focuses on space technology development. It's very important to engage young people in space exploration. Through SPIN, students learn how to build an educational satellite or how to build a rocket. Our rocket team is responsible for building our rocket. Each rocket has a number of subsystems that work together. Each subsystem is tested individually. And finally, after everything is ready, we assemble the rocket and head to the launch site. Then the rocket shoots into the sky. Three, two, one. And reaches its altitude of one kilometer. When we launch our first rocket, no one works on rocket in Greece. But after that, more than five university teams started building their own rockets. And moreover, our students, they study now in the most prestigious university all around the world and they are engaged in space programs. We inspire young people to believe in their dreams. They can believe in themselves, they can create, they, they can explore. What an incredible field trip this has been. I hope the next time you look up at the night sky, you'll remember these amazing explorers and the spectacular new discoveries they're making every day. Thank you for joining me. See you next time and keep exploring.